revolutionary greetings comrades i was honored uh, on the evening of the 20th of december 2023 to present the inaugural comrade job we was a color lecture on access space we were hosted by comrade nematai kwenkwenza i was invited in my capacity as general secretary of the zimbabwe communist party and uh, one of the founding members of the Movement for Democratic Change, MDC, was invited by Comrade Opet Masaraure, who was president of the Amalgamated Rural Teachers Union of Zimbabwe, and uh, also national chairman of the Job, Comrade Job We Was a Color Solidarity campaign. Um, I was joined uh, by Comrade Jacob Karivume, who uh, was uh, also a presenter. I will, uh, Comrade Jacob Garivume has been in prison, has just been re released recently. Um, I will go through the political lecture which I presented in case you might have missed it. We are here to give solidarity to a soldier of peace, a cadet imprisoned by those who refuse to distribute the wealth of this country to every Zimbabwean. Comrade Zekala is a victim of the looting class which wants to continue looting without anyone making noise. The regime regards Comrade Zikala as a threat to their misro. They know that he has the art of mobilizing the mass of our people around the desire to see political, social, and economic change in Zimbabwe. The best the regime could do is to imprison this giant of our struggle. I came to know Comrade Job Wiwa Zikala in 1999 when we were working towards the establishment of a workers' backed mass political formation, the Movement for Democratic Change, MDC. Upon his election as a member of parliament in year 2000, Comrade Zikala rejected the Westminster parliamentary tradition of wearing suits in the Augusta House. He attended, the parliament, attended parliament wearing khaki attire, donning the short trouser of Bermude and the shirt. This was a clear call to transform our parliament to reflect who we are as African people. Comrade Job did not understand why two decades after independence, we still had to operate exactly like the British parliament. By the way, over four decades of our independence, one would think that we are still a British colony. Parliamentary officials did not understand the political message Comrade Sikala which he expressed through his attire. Instead of engaging him, they saw an easy way out there to eject him from parliament. Instead of seeing in Comrade Job Zikala a man who was leading the transformation of our parliament to reflect our Africanness, they saw Comrade Zikala as a political clown. We do not blame them though. They have always wanted to replace the white men and be more white than the white men in their public conduct. The irony is that all this happened when the movement for democratic change was seen as a puppet of the imperialist forces. The dressing attire by Comrade Job Sikala was a clear indication that, while indeed the MTC was hijacked, there were many comrades who remained true to the ideals of the liberation struggle inside the then MTC. Those who presented themselves as anti imperialists located inside ZANU PF. They did exactly what imperialists do, to loot the resources as they continue to do. They inherited colonial laws of subjugating the mass of the people of Zimbabwe. Today, our judges who have thrown Comrade Sikala in prison still wear the wigs they inherited from white minority room. They have kept in prison a man who started as far back as 2000 to transform our parliament and the judiciary. He had to start the law for him to be part of progressive Zimbabweans who seek to transform our judiciary. But just as the parliamentary officials threw him out of parliament, forced him to wear a suit, the judiciary officials have kept Comrade Zikala in prison for him to fail in his attempt to be part of the progressive forces who want to transform our society. Comrade Job Wewa Zikala understood that if we are to transform our society, we need to begin by transforming the key state apparatus like parliament and the judiciary. 
He has done this without any use of violence. But those who fear transformation have decided to bless him away from his comrades. We want to say to Comrade Job Wiwasikala that you are a true Keda, a son of the soil. We stand with you. Millions of progressive citizens of this world are behind you during this difficult time. Do not throw away your political spear. The fight must continue. His involvement in the MDC and Citizens Coalition for Change C is well documented. I would not want to spend time talking about his work in the MTC and the now triple C, other than to say he understood what power is and how to attain it. There are many comrades that think that for one to win state power, one has to be a populist. We are witnessing the rise of, of right-wing populism in the name of fighting ZANU-PF regime. This right-wing populism in the main is anti-constitutionalism, it is rooted in cultism, it seeks to present one individual as the one appointed by God to lead. While an election by its very nature is a popular contest, right-wing populism is a threat to democracy. In his article on right-wing populism, academic Paul D. Scott has this to say, I quote, right-wing populism which also called national populism, is a political ideology which combines right-wing wing politics and populist rhetoric things we was called. These right-wing populists present themselves as speaking for the common people, as we have seen with anti-migrant groups in Western Europe, North America, even in South Africa. Our local right-wing populists hide behind the Bible they throw up verses on daily basis to us with the full knowledge that the majority of the people will not question such leaders to avoid being lapped as angels of the devil. These right-wing populists want everyone to be guided by idealist views, place everything in the hands of God, and allow the said anointed leader to lead. Comrade Job Sikala questioned this new right-wing populism Without referring to it direct and yet to be tactical, he gave a political lecture in a rally where he openly said that populism alone does not win one political power. He mentioned the late Dr. Joshua Nkomo and Dr. Morgan Twangarai, who were very popular with the people of Zimbabwe, and the many African leaders who were popular but did not attain political power. Unfortunately, <clears throat> those he was addressing did not understand that he was questioning the rise of right-wing populism. He understood that right-wing populism needed to be defeated and be replaced with mass action and scientific understanding of our Zimbabwean crisis. Comrade President, you asked me to also talk about the judicial capture in Zimbabwe and what it is to be done to free it from those who have captured it. First, Comrade President, the judiciary in Zimbabwe is not captured. Secondly, we are not fighting for the rule of law, but for the just legal system. The white minority regime had the rule of law, which was used to oppress us. The ZANPF regime has a rule of law that is used against us, as seen with Comrade Zikala and others in a similar situation. Thirdly, the judi judiciary is one of the key state apparatus that is used as a tool by the ruling class against the, those op opposed to it. Valdamin Lenin argued that the state is an organ of class rule, which advances the interests of the class that it represents. The judiciary in Zimbabwe does not represent the working class and the peasantry. It represents the, the ruling class. We can therefore not argue that it is captured. What we need to do is to define the class character of the Zimbabwean state so that we have a scientific understanding of our crisis. The Zimbabwean judiciary emerged alongside the capitalist and the colonial state in, 19, in 1890 as one of the key state apparatus. Other key state apparatus are the executive, parliament, the military prisons. Our task is to transform the Zimbabwean state, establish the dictatorship of the proletariat, 
This requires a scientific understanding of our Zimbabwean crisis as I have already outlined above. As I move to conclusion, Comrade Job Sikala represents other political prisoners that are languishing in jail like the Mtwaga's Republic Party, nine activists and others who are victims of the Zimbabwean state. As the Zimbabwe Communist Party, we are fully behind this campaign. Our support of this campaign is not about building cultism around Comrade Job Wiwasikala. It is about expo exposing the credit of the Zimbabwean regime, which wants to present itself as a revolutionary. There is nothing revolutionary by jailing <coughs> comrades whose key mission is to transform our society. We call on all progressive forces in, in Zimbabwe and outside to join the, the Comrade Job We Was a Color Solidarity campaign. Thank you so much. Amanda Comrades, Red Salute.